Alrighty, here we go. Live already. Let me just uh, switch around and say hi. And look at my cool t-shirt. It says the big board. But on the back, it actually says Whiskey Charlie. I'm part of the team. I'm part of the gang. Anyway, let's go back to the games. Welcome back to Big Board. So I'm going to do a couple of quick things and hopefully that won't take all too, won't take too long. But I thought I'd do it live in case anyone actually showed up on a, a Tuesday at what time is it 11 or 12 o'clock or something like that. So kind of like, a, let's call it a lunchtime break working from home, as they say, Simon, good to see you. Welcome. Uh, so what I'm going to do, let's have a quick look inside 1914, the deluxe edition, Hell Unleashed. This is an older game that has been re uh, uh, imagined, re republished by uh, Mike Nagel, who, uh, and this is uh, printed by Blue Panther Games and published by The War Diary magazine. And I think what they're doing here with Mike is basically taking some of the older Avalon Hill titles <clears throat> and reimagining them. Uh, in some cases, making significant changes to the rules and the system and the way things work, and in other ways, just perhaps refining them and cleaning them up a little bit and giving them, let's call it a facelift, right, uh, to, to a certain extent. So I was looking at the designer's notes for this, and obviously, the Avalon Hill, hey, Charles, good to see you. Good morning. Obviously, this game was released in 1968. So, and at the time it was uh, fairly unpopular. It was deemed to be complex at the time and with some of the mechanics and the limitations around uh, design and mechanic creation and all that sort of fun stuff, it really struggled to gain a lot of traction. And one of the things that Mike has done here is reconciled some of the charts that needed to be kept uh, and some of the detail record keeping that needed to be kept for the game and clean things up. So I'm not gonna get into too much detail on the game because I, I've only skimmed the rules briefly. Uh, there are some funky optional rules in here like facings and stuff like that, which, you know, uh, I, I would probably avoid, uh, but we'll see. Uh, there's an in interesting set of cards here that we're gonna to get to pick from a certain number of them and that's gonna define our strategy for both sides and how how things how things kind of pan out for the uh, for the uh, for both sides in terms of their priorities and strategy and stuff like that. So so we're gonna have a look at this game. So let's pull some bits and pieces out and have a look. So the first things first, these these cards <clears throat> Uh, are going to give us uh, a number, you're going to change the, the number of factors that are going to go to the East Front, or they're going to uh, define mobilization plans and things of that nature. So there's a whole bunch of these in here, and you're going to get to choose from a certain number of them to define what your strategy is going to be for the game. And I think that's going to add some replay value. It's a D6 system. So all that comes with that nice big box by way and I, I quite like the just the simple artwork on it uh, blue panther does a nice job with its boxes now that they can manufacture larger boxes uh, makes life a lot easier uh, so you know unfortunately hollenspiel was uh, afflicted with the the narrow box syndrome and uh, you know most of the games that they have don't all fit now one of the things that mike did do here is Oh, let me see if I can get it open and move the lamp. I've got a game set up here to the left. And as you know, we're in the barn, so I don't have a whole lot of room. <clears throat> but first map, so it's now a double mapper. And this is nice paper, by the way. It's not the thin, flimsy paper that sometimes comes with uh, sort of, sort of uh, some of the Blue Panther uh, production quality. Uh, this is really nice paper. It's got a, a coating to it, I think, that may give it some sort of proof against water, but I wouldn't trust my opinion on that. All right. Uh, so I like I like the color scheme here. Uh, there's a I believe there's one piece of errata in here where there's supposed to be a fortified town that's not fortified. You can see that online. Unfortunately, Mike missed that when he was uh, making making the game. Now, 
what you is you can see this font here looks quite nice in the, the blue in the gray i should say and you, some of these towns are here you know here you can read those all fairly well i'm going to make some comments on the where's the rest of it on the uh fonts in a minute but where's the other map what did i do with it <laughs> here it is right excellent let me get that guy let me get this chart from underneath and open this guy up and i actually haven't laid these maps out side by side yet so let's see how it goes it would appear that Netherlands would go in the north, so I'm going to pick the camera up so we can have a look at this. And that's basically going to go right there like that. And this is going to be a little bit tricky to see because the box in my wife's laptop is in the way. Because this is high, you know, this is like full on super professional effort going on here. But I'm picking up my camera dolly and I'm showing you the second map. And you've got the turn track on the right hand side. 39 turns. How about that bad boy? All right. And the east front is over there. The little box there is going to be, you're going to make a choice about how you allocate forces to the eastern front and go from there. Just what's up, dog? Uh, yeah. And so, you know, the, the first impression is very nice. I, I really do like the map. I think it's uh, evocative and uh, he may have gone a little crazy with the railroads, but you know, it's all good. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this font. This font, uh, when you see them on the charts in a second, it's going to be a little challenging to read. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> so here, for instance, it says political interaction charts. And that that's just, an, these are just eyesores for me. Thank goodness all the rest of the the, the, the writing here is in a standard font, right? At times, times Roman or whatever it may be. Combat results table here. And then now when you're fighting these battles, it's interesting that uh, depending on what the number of factors are that the defender has, you're going to use a different CRT. And it's going to impact your success. How many losses you take as the attacker is impacted by the number of defenders. Uh, you've got the terrain effects here. Now, I would have straight up would have liked to have seen just put the icon here right next to the that would have made it a little more user friendly and there's no i don't believe i'm just looking now on the map there's no terrain effects chart on the map even though there was plenty of room for one and then artillery is done is used uh, bombardment is done a little bit differently as well this is an icon that's going to appear on the counters and then you're going to uh, you're going to have some sort of impact on uh, fortifications based on the type of artillery that both sides have and a die roll. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, this, this is this all this mo east front mobilization stuff that I mentioned earlier on. So we're just going to put that down for the moment. Now the counters, and this is where I think uh, Mike put a lot of work into the rule book. Uh, into the, the sort of changes, I should say. So let me just flip the counters over to their front side and we'll start with counter sheet number one. That would probably be a good place to start. Now you've got these nice thick counters from Blue Panther, always very sexy. Uh, you'll note here, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit uh, and just let me just check the chat real quick. <clears throat> okay, good to see we've got a few people here. If you've just joined, say hi, don't be shy. Uh, the A4 is going to tell us how many steps are in the unit and it's going to allow, we're going to conduct a, uh, let me just check. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to go from A4 to A3 to A2 down to A, I think there's A1s here as well, A1s. And that's going to represent the cores being reduced down in com combat effectiveness until at such point that they are then eliminated. There are also brigade scale and regimental scale uh, formations as well. Hopefully you saw those. I just realized I was looking at the counters and not at the screen, but hopefully you saw that. All right, so there's that action going on. That's the allied side. And then the Germans here, similar concept. And already you can see pretty interestingly, look at the, you know, we compare two cores here. Combat factor of seven, defense value of 12, defense value of 10 here, both have the same movement rate. And 
Now, if you if, imagine we're trying to attack this 6, 10, 3 here, 14 factors versus 10. So it's going to not quite one and a half to one. I'm going to need three cores to attack one core, 7, 14, 21, to get a two to one attack. So it's going to be interesting, particularly given, you know, depending on what the stacking rules are going to be, as to how you're going to be able to mass and create potential breakthroughs in the early part of the war, because we're dealing with uh, all the way through, this is a daily uh, turn scale. So it's one day per turn. So uh, actually two days per turn, my apologies, two days per turn. So this runs through October 30th. I just saw it's 39 turns, <laughs> not October 39th. That would be a little odd. I'm trying to see if there's anything else here of note. Yeah, and here once again, look with the fonts uh, on the on the text. You know, there's this shadowing on the back here, which uh, just helps things not be very clear. So that's a little a little disconcerting. But I love the counters. Counters pop. They're uh, now much easier to read and keep track of. I believe in the original version, which I think I have a scan of somewhere. Uh, there was a a bunch of uh, nonsense going on with that. So uh, anyway, uh, that was difficult to track. And then we've got uh, other forces here and then uh, whether units are activated or not, so locations and all that sort of good stuff. All right, so that's 1914. What I was also hoping to do is show you another game, but I think I'm going to be out of time here. So what I'm going to do is restart this uh stream in a few minutes oh i should tell you about the rules real quick what do we got here including scenarios and setup 18 pages nice layout full color lots of examples I'm trying to flip through these clear crisp rules really like it. nice index uh no uh you know no uh search facility in the back there but uh there you go some optional rules Deals with fortifications and other bits and pieces. Oh yeah, so the diamonds, good catch. Uh, the diamonds are going to be, that's the artillery. So I'll show you where is the CRT. So here's the CRT here for, for barrages. And then when we look at the diamonds on the units, which there are none there, where are the, must be the German forces that have, there we go. See these white diamonds here, All right? Let me just pull this out. So that is gonna represent, that represents the, the artillery capabilities of the various units. And depending on the color, I believe, will determine the effectiveness, yeah, artil artillery types and things like that. So that's how that will play out. And you'll notice that not all units have them. Uh, so it's all the artillery is consolidated into the actual army cores for the for the forces. All right. So look, just a quick look at this. Uh, what I will do is try and uh, look back in in a little while, and then we'll go over the new MMP title, Strike Counter Strike, Fourth Armored Division uh, versus Panzerlier, along with SAR. And we'll have a look at this uh, and what's, what contents are in the box or in the bag uh, for that uh, in the next hour or so. All right. Talk to all you guys real soon. Cheers.